Welcome to the episode of Locked In. This episode is going to be my review on the Redshift Shock Stop Suspension Stem. Now, I know suspension stem is going to drive some people crazy, and the second I told my friends that I got one for my bike, they're like, dude, that's stupid. They imagined stems of old with crazy shocks sticking out of them and everything, but Redshift was a company that came up with, in my opinion, a very innovative product for the modern age that gets away from the stigma of a traditional suspension stem. In this video, I'm going to be going over specs and features, price, installation, and my final thoughts. So, specs and features. This stem is an adjustable stem that's going to allow you to have 10 to 20 mil of suspension travel in your handlebars. What that basically means is it's going to allow you to have a little bit of dampening once you hit a hard bump so that it basically takes off the edge of a what I'm assuming most people are going to use this for either a city bike with rough roads or a cross bike or a rigid hardtail mountain bike just to add into a little bit of suspension just to take off the edge on your hands, your wrists, your forearms and everything else. Now these are available in a variety of lengths from 90 to 120 millimeters at negative or positive six degrees. They also have a plus 30 degree 100 millimeter stem for somebody who wants something very upright. Now this is a good broad spectrum of lengths. Get this stem, it features a pack basically of elastomers. They give you a great guide on how to install the stem and how to weight the stem or basically pack it with the elastomers that fit your body weight. Now if you ride this on a straight bar or a drop bar, even at the same rider weight, your elastomers are going to change because your hand position actually affects how the stem is going to handle. Now you can obviously tweak the weight rating basically to your preference. They don't recommend usually going any lighter than what your body weight is rated at, but you could go something slightly stiffer if you want a stiffer ride depending on where you're riding. Now we get on the price. This stem retails for $139 and I know that seems like a lot for an aluminum stem that is very heavy, but you have to keep in mind what this is basically going up against, which in my opinion is the Lau Fork. This is gonna give you the most compliance for the least amount of money that I'm aware of and comment below if I'm totally missing out on a product that is out right now. So in that guys, the Lau Fork, I believe right now ranges around $800 for my style of bike. And this stem at $139 to give you at least a third, if not almost half of the travel of the Lau Fork, I think that's a killer deal and that warrants totally the cost. Now on insulation. I would definitely recommend watching the insulation guide video for the stem. They kind of almost make it seem like it's really difficult. I had no problem initially setting it up. I did have to have a longer tool to get into the stem to tighten the component that basically holds the elastomers into place, but that's a basic Allen tool. And if you have a basic set of T-shaped Allen wrenches, you'll have no problem doing this install. You just want to make sure you follow the correct order and process and don't install it the wrong way. So now onto my final thoughts. I really like this stem, to be honest. It is something that I definitely wouldn't race for cyclocross, but for a gravel event or just commuting or riding around my local trails, I don't think I'd ever go back. And I'm dead serious about this. They are not paying me to say this. I really like it. There is some slight give to it if I am out of the saddle and really pressing down on the bars. But if you have a good rocking side to side motion, there's literally no play. It really depends on where your body weight's at. I notice that if I've leaned a little more forward, I might feel a little bit more bounce. But if I'm kind of middle weighted like you should be or farther back, I don't really feel it as much. Now on the streets, even commuting on my bike, it definitely dampens bigger potholes a lot better than you imagine. It really does take, I'd say, a good 10 to 25% of the edge off of when you're riding on a trail. And you can see in the video footage that I've been overlaying on this, there's some really choppy downhill that I'm doing on this bike, and my arms would definitely be flailing way more than they are. And it definitely takes a lot of the edge off and it's helped me on longer descents not feel as fatigued as quickly so that I can basically stay more relaxed and have better control of the brakes and my body weight because I'm not focusing on just trying to hang on for dear life. I'm actually enjoying it and being able to pick my line a little better because I have better control over the handlebars. So would I recommend this stem? Hell yeah. I definitely think this is, def this is something that some aspiring gravel rider or racer might be interested in, like I said, for cyclocross or something that you're really wrenching on the bike a lot more, that slight loss in energy or power in a race scenario, I think might be detrimental, but in a long gravel ride with something with more technical descents where it's just a long day and you're fatiguing yourself a lot more, this might help someone stay a little fresher a little longer. 
So I hope you like this video. If you have any more questions, comment below. And please like this video and subscribe to this channel. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All the links are in the description below. And thanks for watching this episode of Locked In. Let's get to